escape uh, Egypt, and we know that Jesus said that you'll offer, offer a sacrifice. He said, it's by that blood to the door. He said, I will surely pass over all that has the blood and fly to the heart and to the rise. She's She's going to
allowing God to move into our hearts, erase the thoughts of this world today from our minds right now, giving our heart and mind and our attention to Jesus this morning so that we may get the fullness of the message and what He has uh, for us this morning. Uh, I ask you this morning, uh, once again, it's good to see everyone, and I welcome each and every one of you and everyone that's watch, that will be watching on uh, uh, YouTube this morning. We welcome you. Uh, we ask you to turn this morning to Hebrews, Hebrews, the 6th chapter, and the 17th through 19th verse. Uh, we find in this title this morning, who's supposed to make the coffee. You hear that joke all the time. Hebrews. So man, you'll get up and make the coffee for your ladies. Amen. <laughs> this morning what we're looking at is we need an anchor. Now, we look at the events that has taken place uh, this year. We find that it may not have turned out like some of us desired. Uh, we find that in this new uh, presidency uh, this morning that we find that there's things that's happening that's not lining up with God's Word. Well, you say, preacher, you got to watch what you say uh, uh, now uh, uh, Now that you're on camera. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to say any different when I'm on camera than I am when I'm not on camera. So this morning, if it offends someone... Listen to me this morning. What I say lines up with the Word of God. Uh, so if you don't like it, take it up with God this morning. And let you, you try to change His mind. Amen. So we see here this morning. Um, uh, and the first, while well, y'all mark right there. First, let me take you back to the second chapter. Because this is important that we hear this. Because this is a hearers be warned this morning. Uh, this morning, if you don't want to uh, adhere to the message or adhere to the Word of God this morning, uh, I want to forewarn you what God says. He says, Therefore we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. Why? For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just re recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Listen this morning. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that we hear out of God's word. Why? Because this morning, as we see in that verse, unless we adhere to the word of God, all the things that we have heard down through the years, when we lose our prayer life, when we lose our, 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 our walk with Jesus Christ, we begin to let those things slip. And we find that in the day in which we live, we have never let the Word of God slip further than we have in the day in which we live in right now. Well, when, when, when our government says it's okay for you to... Be what you want to be today. You can be a female today and a male tomorrow. It's just whatever mood you get up in. Can I tell you, God said that there were only two. There was man and woman. I want us to understand that this morning. The Bible said He made male and female. The Bible didn't say God made an it or someone that wants to be something else. You cannot be nothing except what God has made you to be. Listen, man may tell you these things, but God never backs down from His Word. I want you to understand that this morning. So we need to take a more earnest heed to the Word of God. Why? Because He is the anchor of our soul. He is the anchor of our life. Now in the 17th verse of the 6th chapter, where is God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirm it by an oath. By two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure 
and steadfast, which entered into within the veil. Now listen this morning. I want us to pay close attention to the Word of God this morning as we uh, go through this this morning. I want us to get an understanding of God this morning. I want us to get an understanding of what God intended for us. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you this morning, He has so many promises that He gives to us if we would only follow, if we would only hold on to what He says. But this morning we have a problem in our lives. If we don't like something, we just ignore it. Well, let me tell you, you can't ignore God this morning. You can't ignore uh, the things that He said is right and the things that He says is wrong. I want to see that this morning. Now, why do we need an anchor for our soul? Why in the world we need something like that? Well, we're living in a rapid changing world. It has changed and in, in, in two months, this is the second month of this year, it has changed in two months from what it was two months ago. We have a president now that has went in there and eradicated all the things that our former president tried to do for America. I'm just going to tell you. And this morning, we need something to hold on to as Christians in this life. We see that uh, technology has surpassed anything that we could ever have imagined. We, we here at Paper Town, we're, we're old school, but now we have a camera. We have a camera uh, back here, and we have uh, uh, something to watch it on in the back because we can't sit like we need to seat in here. So what we find is we moved up a little bit in technology, but it's gone so much further than we could ever imagine here. Uh, we find that television is one of the great ruins of society uh, today because they put on there what they want on there. They put on there trying to uh, brainwash our children. Understand that this morning. That's their sole purpose in today is to brainwash our children. If you don't believe me, watch the cartoons uh, that are on TV now mm -hmm. before you turn your children loose and let them watch them especially Disney stuff. Can I tell you this morning that Disney is all for uh, the homosexual uh, uh, people today. I know somebody's probably going to call me, but it's okay. We'll talk about it because I got the Word of God on my side. Amen. Amen. But it has a radical change on, on our culture. And it changes the way we think and the way we live. It has an effect. See, this morning, we would love to have everybody sitting here. We would love to have the choir stand up here this morning to where all of our voices would have blended in as one this morning. Uh, we would love to have uh, uh, Brother Bill singing with us this morning, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. Sister Amy, she's got the voice of an angel this morning. I don't know why she won't sing. But what I'm saying is this morning, it has changed our lives. It has changed the way we live. It has changed the way we sit. It has changed the, the way we look. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, well, it's hard to tell somebody sometimes who they are because they got this mask on their face. I was picking on a lady the other day in Walmart uh, uh, that I knew. She used to go here. She didn't recognize me, and I kept on messing with her. She was getting more angry and more angry. So I pulled my mask down, and she laughed. <laughs> then she tried to hit me. But what we find is, we have a generation now. A lot of times they call it Generation X. It's probably more like Y or Z now. Uh, we find that this generation, we don't know them anymore. We don't understand them anymore. Why? Because this generation has grew up in a different time than what we grew up. This generation, uh, I can tell you now uh, that when I was a, a young lad, uh, I mean, younger than any, well, Jessica's age. I was brought up in Paper Town Baptist Church. And I was brought up in Paper Town Baptist Church. When the doors opened, I came to Paper Town Baptist Church. Not because I wanted to, I can assure you, as a child, there's more things that were more important to me, especially on Sunday night. Well, I loved Sunday night TV when I was a kid. My mama cut it off and said, You're going to church. I grew up in church. There's a problem in the generations that has come after that. It's a generation now, well, if, if, Caitlin, if you want to go to church, it's okay. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm just being honest. I'm just picking on Caitlin this morning. 
But it's, that's the way it is now in the world and the society we live in today because we have a generation in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s that have skipped God. Skipped God altogether. Mamas and daddies didn't care <coughs> whether you went to church or not. I know Chris's mom and daddy wasn't like that. I know Joyce's mom and daddy wasn't like that. I know Sister Joyce's mom and daddy. We got some of the older generation in here that the older generation made us come to church. And I'm so glad of that. You know why? Because I began to learn more. You know, we send our kids to school whether, whether they want to go or not. I can tell you there's days when I, I know that Emily don't want to go to school. <laughs> but what we find is Daddy loves her enough and cares for her enough that he makes her go so she'll learn how to read and write. So she'll learn arithmetic. You know what the arithmetic is? See, that's an old school learn. Math. <laughs> that they can better themselves in the world in which we live in. Let me tell you something. Going to church is no different than sending your children to school. It is more important than going to school. Ooh, you're going to get some principals and some teachers against you this morning. Can I tell you this morning that your soul is more important than your math? Your soul is more important than, than English or, or any other stuff. The reason it is because your soul is what is going to take you into eternity. Whether you love God or whether you have ignored God all of your life, whether you have never accepted Him, see, we need an anchor this morning. And that anchor is Jesus Christ. Amen. We're in a world that's ever changing. Ever changing. Listen to what the other prophet says. We have sown in a wind and we are now reaping in a whirlwind. Man, it's got bad. Uh, anybody ever seen a whirlwind out there? It's just a wind that blows and it'll pick up a little bit of dust and it'll move on. That's a whirlwind. But anybody ever seen a tornado? I know Sister Joyce has. Sister Joyce, uh, uh, she got caught up in one when she was about, what, 16, 15? And, and it's not a pleasant thing to be in. And that's the world that we are in today. It's not very pleasant. And we need something to give us hope. And the only thing that I can think of that gives me hope is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The promises that He has promised us, the things He said He would give to us, He said, my peace I give to you. That's the greatest thing as a Christian we could ever have is the peace of Jesus Christ this morning. Wow, He was, he was satisfied. He was satisfied in everything. He was satisfied in going to the cross for you and I, for our souls. He was satisfied. Thank you, Lord. He said, Father, I've done everything you sent me here to do. <clears throat> He said, but if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thy will be done, O Lord. This morning, Jesus went to the cross for us Amen. to be our anchor, to be the anchor for our soul, to give us the promise of, of eternal life. We're shocked, not really, kind of sort of shocked, at how this election has brought moral decay already in two months. Moral decay to the day in which we live right now. So how is that, preacher? As I said a while ago, he has, he has already uh, signed off, I don't even know how many, things that our former President Trump tried to do in America to bring this country back to God. He gave us a freedom that we never had in religion before in a long, long time. Folks, it shall not be long before we see those things begin to rescind from us. We need an anchor, amen. We need an anchor like we've never had before. Amen. People say, well, you know what, preacher? Character doesn't matter as long as everything is going well. Character is all you've got. That's right. How you live, how you pay your bills, how you present yourself to folks, how you carry yourself, how you treat people. Man, that's your character. That's your character. Don't pay your bills and go down there and try to borrow some money. You'll find out what your character is really like. See, this morning, we're living in an ever-changing world. 
But we have one constant in our life. It is God the Father. It is Jesus Christ. God gave us a promise in his word. He said, I never change. I never change. And he said, I, I, I never lie. Isn't it wonderful to have something in our life that we know that never changes or that never lies to us? I can tell you this morning, when he said my soul could be saved through Jesus Christ, that wasn't a lie. He saved amen. my soul, amen. amen. He saved it forever. Uh, we live in a day where you can go out, you can have this, as people would say, this fun weekend, and in about three weeks, you realize that your fun has took hold. It's beginning to grow inside of you. And you don't want this child. So you just go and you have it removed from you. And society says it's okay. We'll use that unborn child for research. We'll use that child for stem cell research. Can I tell you they can do stem cell research without an unborn baby? Without a fetus that's been abandoned by its mother. It's been tortured by a doctor. I'm making this, uh, I'm trying not to make it too bad, but it's, it's a bad thing. Amen. When you go to have an abortion, they say that baby goes through more trauma than it ever would in his whole lifetime. <coughs> See, we live in a place in a society today, the Bible says we shall not kill. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not kill. Well, that baby's not a person. Let me tell you what he told David. He said, I knew you before you were ever born. I knew you. How can God know something that never was? He knows all things. He said, I knew you. He said, I knew you. These people have not learned about our history today. Has not learned from a history that we have lived through and been living in. While we look back to the children of Israel, they lived their lives through thousands of years. And then one day God says, Enough is enough. And they lived in bondage for 400 years. Then God brought them to a land of promise, gave them everything that they would need in their life. Houses that had no, that didn't have people living in them, all they had to do was take them. Vineyards that had been planted, all they had to do was go take them. He had given them everything that they needed in their life. And God is trying to do that for us today as God's children. Now, is that saying that bad things won't happen? No, we went through that Wednesday night. We had a wonderful uh, uh, Bible study Wednesday night. Bad things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. Good things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. God said it rains on the just as well as the unjust. You know why? Because God loves everyone. He loves everyone. He wants everyone to have the same opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ. To know Jesus Christ as their anchor for their soul. It breaks my heart. The longer we live in this life, the more we see that morality disintegrates. And we see it in our lives. I'm not an old man. I, well, I guess I am, but I'm not as old as some. But what I know that through my life, I've seen society fall. And I've seen society fall again. And I've seen society fall again. To now where we're at, it seems like the morality of America today is almost non-existent. That's right. Only the Christians today. So now what do we do, preacher? We need to look back to the Word of God. We need to turn back to the Word of God. In Jeremiah 6 and 16, he tells us to look to the old paths, amen. Look to the old ways because they are good ways, amen. We have a, a real good, feel good uh, 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 society today, a church society. Uh, we was watching this morning and uh, uh, one of them had a book that says, um, The Way to Wealth. Way to wealth. And I tell you, the only wealth that I know of this morning that God has promised me is eternal life. He has, he has promised me a treasure in heaven. Amen. 
He never promised me a treasure down here. He never promised me that everything was going to go the way I wanted to go down here. But he said, one day, one day, he said, I'm coming back. Anybody ever heard of the rapture? Amen. Amen. That's what I'm looking for, church. I'm looking for it today. I'll look for it tomorrow. I'll look for it next week, next year, until it happens. We live in a society today that don't believe in the rapture. We have many churches today that profess to know Jesus Christ, but they don't believe in the rapture. They don't believe in hell. They just believe that God is loving and everything's going to be all right. Everybody's going to heaven. That's the biggest lie Satan's ever told. Everybody's not going to heaven according to the Word of God. You know Jesus preached on hell more than anybody in the Bible? Come on, bro. So if hell's not real, Jesus would not have told us about hell. He talked about heaven. Told us how wonderful it is. Man, John, John wrote over in Revelation the most beautiful picture of heaven that I've ever, that I've ever heard of, I've ever read. For you ladies, man, it's got walls of pearls, uh, gates of pearls, walls of jasper and emeralds and sapphires, and man, it's going to be beautiful. Can't wear none of them. <laughs> but it's going to be beautiful. That was the only way John could ever describe how beautiful heaven was with an earthly mind. And I can tell you this earthly mind is going to be mesmerized when we walk through That's the right. gates of heaven because it's not going to look like anything that we could ever imagine in this life. It's not going to be like anything that we could ever imagine. So there'll be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain. Man, I can't imagine. I can't imagine living in a place where there's none of those things. Why? Because we wake up every morning. Hard to get out of bed. Hard to walk around. Don't want to go to work. One day, can I tell you, there'll be no more. There'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness. There will be love, happy, and peace. And heaven is going to be a place where it works the way that God says it's going to work. You won't have to worry about being, anyone being disobedient to the Word of God. If you make it to heaven, you will be obedient. Why? Because you want to be. Because you love Him. And you're going to praise Him for what He's done for each and every one of us. He is an anchor for our soul. Now listen, the history of, of the nation of Israel records in the Old Testament as classic proof. As classic proof. As the scripture says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The prophet Ezra says, if you seek the Lord, he will be found of you. But if you forsake the Lord, he will forsake you. Understand that this morning. You can deny him. You can deny him. And you can deny him. What God said, what Paul said in Romans, he said, then when you get to a certain point in your life, he said, I'll turn you over to reprobate mind." You'll no longer even have a desire or uh, anything to do with God. You won't worry about whether you're saved or not. Things like today, our current philosophy is if you believe, so are you. I mean, you can be whatever you want to be today. And it's okay with God. That's not with God, but that's with me. That's right. We live in a society today where there's no absolutes. We talked about it earlier. If you want to be a girl and you're a boy, then you're a girl. If you want to be a boy and you want to be a girl, then you're a girl. But can I tell you, God says there are absolutes in this life, and he has not changed one of those absolutes yet. He never will. He never will. <coughs> I'll tell you this. God created man and he created female. And that's the way he intended for it to be. And man has changed. Man has changed God's philosophy. But God has not. God in Romans first chapter said it's an abomination. That's right. He said it's an abomination. God hates. God hates sin. He wants none of it. He says, it's not his desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is God's desire for mankind this morning. And here we are continually, continually rejecting such a great offer to have something that is constant in our life that never, ever moves. Jesus is the rock 
of our salvation. That's right. The rock of our salvation. And I'm not talking about like one of these rocks out here that the kids pick up and they throw and hit cars and wonders. And I'm not talking about a rock like that. I'm talking about Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a rock that you can't move, amen. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about something that will never be moved as long as this world is here and it's going to carry over into our eternity. Lord have mercy. There's no absolutes. The truth is what you perceive it to be. This is what's got our world turned upside down. As I said, there's no absolutes. You can do whatever you want to. And what we see now, as we read over in the second chapter, the whole world is drifting. It's drifting toward destruction. We need an anchor. Now, we know all of us fisher people in here. I'm not going to say fishermen. I'm going to say fisher people because my wife likes to fish. But we have people that love to fish, but we know that if we go out in a boat, you better have an anchor because sometimes the current is swift where you may be going to fish. You need something to hold your boat in place so that you can stay atop of the fish. We need an anchor for this drifting world. To hold this world in a place where God wants it to be. Hold this world in a place where we don't, where we have absolutes. Where our children know from generation to generation to generation who God is. Who Jesus is. And what his purpose was coming to this world. Amen. But we have generation after generation today. They heard the name Jesus. Oh, I went to Sunday school. I remember the stories of Jesus. I went to vacation Bible school and they taught us about a man named Jesus. But what we find is that they don't know who Jesus is. They recognize a name. But we got to know who Jesus is on a personal level. We got to know that he came to save us from our sins. We have got to know that when we call upon his name, he will receive us and he will keep us. It's wonderful to know that there's somebody that loves us. That loves us so much that no matter, no matter where the wind blows, no matter what happens, he's there for us. He's there for us. All we have to do is call on his name. Call on his name. This rock that I'm talking about, the psalmist says, he lifted me out of the miry clay and set my foot on a solid rock. Can I tell you, Christ is that rock. On Christ a solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Can I tell you that this morning? You may put your hope in other things. You may put your hope in, in, in the government. You may put your hope in your husband. You may put your hope in your wife. You may put your hope in your children, but can I tell you we live in a demoralizing society today when you can't put your hope and your trust in nothing but Jesus Christ. For he is the one. He is the eternal hope that we have in this, in this world which we live in. Now listen. In our text he tells us by, that by two immutable things, which it was impossible for God to lie that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge and laid hold upon the hope that is set before us. This hope is Jesus, which entered into the veil. Listen. Now, in the old days, when there was a yearly sacrifice, we find that everyone would come to Jerusalem and they would bring their sacrifice and they would bring it to the temple. And whatever they had, some... Some folks was poor and they could only bring a dove. Some folks could bring a goat. Others could bring a calf. Whatever it was that they brought, they would bring it. And they would hand it on to the priest. And that priest would take hold of it. And the male in that family, or whoever was the head of that house, would slay that animal. It was a sacrifice for their family. And that the priest would take the blood of that sacrifice and he would put it upon the, the horns of the altar. Wow. But now, praise God, Amen, we don't have to do that messy stuff no more. 
Can you imagine what kind of mess there was when you had hundreds of thousands, maybe I don't know how many, we come to Jerusalem and the priests had to go through this ritual? Can you imagine? But for us, this priest only had to be sacrificed once. Right. This high priest that we serve, Jesus Christ, is forever making intercession for us before the Father. Wow. Only one man could go in the Old Testament after he was scrubbed and cleaned and purged and he could go in before God. And if his heart wasn't right, when he went in, he would fall over dead. You can't go before the presence of God with sin in your life. Can I tell you that? And many try to do that very thing today. They go to church. They want to praise God. They want to worship God. They want to do these things in the name of the Lord and still have sin all over their heart and all over their lives. And God is not going to accept that sacrifice that you bring with sin in your life. The Bible said that those, those priests would have to go before the, the, behind the veil, they would have symbols. And they'd have a rope tied to their leg. And when they went in there and the symbols quit symboling, and the rope quit moving, they'd start pulling. They would know that that priest was not clean. They would know that that priest has died before God. Can I tell you, church members are dying before God every day? Church members are dying before God every day. Why? Because their, their hearts are still laden with sin. Their lives are still full of sin. And God says there's a way to get rid of that. We find that these immutable things, times may change, but the principles of God stand forever. He never changes these principles. Listen to what uh, the psalmist says. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. There are many devices in man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Thank you, Lord. The counsel of the Lord shall stand. The liberals in our nation today are trying to defy this notion. They have filed suits after suits after suits. And they have won many of these things. We find that prayer was taken out of church early. May I school? Yes, sir. Uh, we find that the Ten Commandments was to, made to be taken out of school and out of our courthouses and all our public places. It won't be long, church, before they, our, our, our government will be trying to take everything out of our lives. Right? Our freedom to assemble. They're working on that right now. Mm -hmm. Using under the name of COVID. Under the name of COVID, they're trying to take our assembly away. Out in California, they found out they couldn't stop the assembly. But what they said now then, you can't sing. You can't testify. In other words, you can't talk in church. Because you may expel the COVID inside the church. So now what have they done? They've left the assembly there, but they've taken away the praise of God. The church can no longer praise God. The, the, the church can no longer thank God for His mercies because His mercies are great and His mercies are every day of our lives. That's right. Ethan, you woke up this morning breathing in. God's mercies are renewed every day. Every day. Why? Because of that rock. Because of Jesus Christ and the promise that He gave to us. We find that God sent an oath, right? This is this was an oath that God made. Now we understand that when we go, anybody ever had to go to jury duty? Yeah. Have you ever been in the courtroom when they were doing the trial and everybody that goes up there and you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you. God didn't have to do that. But he did it anyway. He swore upon himself. Why? Because there was no greater to swear upon. He cannot lie. So therefore, he made this oath upon himself. 
But everything he speaks and everything that he says and everything that he does is true. Wow. The purpose of an oath is to end all argument. If you tell the truth, there's no argument there. Unless you unless you got him and you for a dollar and she's gonna argue. <laughs> But I want you to know now, the Bible says the foolish of men, oh, God is wiser. God is wiser. God is wiser than any man that's ever been born in this world. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. He has shown you, old man, what is good. Now listen to what Paul said in Romans 1. He tells us that the wrath of God is going to be revealed against the unrighteousness and the ungodliness of men who hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. For when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. I'm convinced that we're this close to the threshold of society. We have ignored God. We have rejected great God's great offering. And can I tell you, there is a wrath to be poured out on America. It started years ago. We see the wrath of God happening every day in, in America. Wow. We see tsunamis. We see earthquakes. We see hurricanes. We see tornadoes. These might be the wrath of God. These might be the wrath of God. Anybody remember the tower, the Twin Towers when they failed? This is America. Nothing could happen in America. We were, we were guarded by the National Guard, by the uh, Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines. How in the world could such a thing take place when we have the greatest army in America? And I tell you what, God's wrath don't need an army. That's right. Right. God's wrath needs a few men willing to die for a purpose. It wasn't for a good purpose that they died, but they died for a purpose. Wicked America. Wicked America. We're going to die. That we might destroy wicked America. Let me tell you, that's all God needs. We see so many societies that have went down. Godless societies. And we're going to see another one before this world is over with. This morning, we're about to run out of time. This morning, I want you to see. The Lord said, I have sworn, saying, Surely I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. We've got to understand when God says something, God means it. That's right. And He's not going to be like us. That we'll waver, we'll make waivers for things. We'll make waivers for our children. We'll make waivers for our bosses. We'll make, we'll, we'll in other words, God's not going to lie for us. We may be lenient in some ways, but God is not lenient. Can I tell you this morning? What He says, it shall stand. In Deuteronomy 7 9, know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. The faithful God, which keepeth the covenant of mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Did you get that? I want you to get that this morning. He's a faithful God. And he loves those which keep it his commandments. Mm -hmm. Keep it his commandments. Wow. Are we that nation today? Are we that people today that we love God so much that we'll follow Him no matter what He says? That we'll do whatever He says no matter what the outcome may be. We live in a world today you may get locked up in jail if you get out on the street preaching or talking about Jesus or handing out tracts. But is that going to stop us today? No, Jesus told us to go make disciples. He said, That's our commission. Go make disciples, no matter what the cost. You remember the disciples of Jesus? They were out teaching, 
preaching the word, and they got locked up. They got beat. They got whipped. And when they got turned loose, you know what they did? They went back doing the same thing, preaching and teaching and telling about Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says that they thought it was great that they got beat for Jesus' name's sake, for the word. Are we going to be like little cowards? Let we go. David said, why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? <clears throat> Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. That's what we need to be doing today. He's praising him for his countenance. This world, I believe, has gone too far. There's no turning back now. I would pray and I keep praying to God that it would change. But I'm afraid we see decay even more and more every day. We find that when this body has no more life, it begins to decay. When they put us in the grave, you know what? This body decays. Why? Because there's no more life in it. This country that we live in today has no more life for Jesus. It takes on more decay. Let's don't let that happen, please. We know that there's a blessed hope of the appearing of the glory of glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that Jeremiah sat in the cave and he wept as he looked across the pile of rubble in Jerusalem. Great Jerusalem. The great city of God. But death had set in. Decay had set in. They'd forgotten who God was. That's right. As our country has forgotten who God is today. We must. We must. The beautiful temple of Solomon was destroyed. Mm -hmm. We must remember. The old past. The old ways. All this fuddy duddy stuff now, preacher. I, I, don't, I don't like to go to church where all I do is preach. I like to go to church where they praise and they shame me. Run around for about 45 minutes. And then the preacher will get up and say a little bit of something. That's the church I like. Let me tell you something. My granddaddy got saved. My daddy got saved. I got saved. Still the same word. That's right. Still the old past. And he can save you today if you'll only allow him to. If you'll only let him move into your life. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to close. There's a New Testament promise. <coughs> Paul said in Romans 5 and 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith unto this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope make us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. That's our anchor. That's our hope. Both said, steadfast and sure that entered into the veil is Jesus. Remember when Jesus died, the Bible said the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. We now have access. We don't have to wait on a priest. We now have access to Jesus Christ. We have access through Jesus Christ to God our Father. This morning I'm offering you that access through Jesus Christ, the Father. And I ask you this morning, would you? Would you accept Jesus if you don't know him this morning? And if you're far away from him and you used to be close to him and you've drifted afar, would you come this morning? Would you call on his wonderful name and say, Lord, I need you again. I've drifted too far away. I need to be in your fold once again. The Bible said he left 99 to go seek one. That's right. That was lost. This morning he's here seeking you. If you need him this morning, look at the song there. Why are you cast down and why are you worried? Enter then the veil of God is given to us through Jesus Christ. Would you come in this morning? Page number 113. Would you stand with us? <clears throat>